So my name is Gentry Patrick and I'm a professor in the Division of Biological Sciences in the section of Neurobiology. I'm also the Director of Mentorship and Diversity for uh, the Division of Biological Sciences. You would have not predicted that I would be a full professor here at UCSD today in neuroscience. In part because, you know, my mom had me at 16 years old. I grew up in inner city, South Central LA. It's the first to go to college in my family. No one knew about science. I didn't have any neuroscientists, family members or uh, friends of the family to emulate and to ask questions. of. Just this interest in learning was fundamental. If, not, if I had not had a, a true passion for the learning process in general, I think that I would have uh, not be on this trajectory. And for me, if I look back at my life, it was having these amazing mentors in high school, outside of high school. My mom, very young, having me at such a young age, right? But she was extremely um, dedicated to me getting a good education. In fact, she consistently talked about Gentry, you have to use education. That's the, the only way that you're going to be able to get out of this. I got to Berkeley in 1988, I remember. I gained a temporary employment for the Employment Development Department. And I just had a little summer job there. And my job was to look at applicants and provide little summer work for them. And it just so happened a job came along for a research lab washing dishes and I sent myself on that interview. I don't think you were supposed to do that but that's what I did. <laughs> and I got the job and the guy was a professor at UC Berkeley but he owned a private company and I was working in his private company so I had it working in a research lab and I also was able to get paid and that began to provide some um, stability in my life. A very important part of the trajectory of my success was being accepted into a terminal master's program at UC San Francisco. I applied to this program and they only took two students a year. I spent an hour on the phone convincing um, the lead uh, professor who ran the program that he should take a chance on me. He's like, you know, you have such good MCAT scores and GREs, but your grades are poor, which makes us think that you were just lazy, right? <laughs> And I said, there's a reason. I had to work. I didn't have good study skills. I had too many other things that I had to attend to. I couch surfed semester to semester. I could have just given up. I could have just said, wow, OK, I guess I'll try something different. But I, t I assured him that he should give me a shot and that he would not regret it. And we, we joke to this day that, like, what if I had said no? Gentry, this would all be, we wouldn't be here today. <laughs> And that's a, a kind of a great example of someone looking beyond um, the grades, making sure that you know the capacity for success is there, but looking at all the other more salient aspects, right? Access for students from diverse backgrounds is a prominent goal of mine. And I want my colleagues to see that for minimal effort, they can make such a big difference in the lives of students. You know, a lot of times these students, you spend an hour with them and that may be fundamental to them choosing to stick the course or move on. 